How do you stay coordinated wearing double boots, double mountaineering boots with crampons? They're super awkward, ultra tall, and it's very easy to stumble around and stab yourself. I'm going to give you several ideas of how to solve this problem in the video, as well as at the end of the video, give you two stories to tell you why this is ultra important, why you should do these things, and also one crazy idea at the absolute end of the video for the people that, uh, you know, I might wanna try something to improve my stepping so I don't stumble around. The first thing you need to really do when you work on trying to not stumble around when you're using double mountaineering boots are ankle exercises. And you say, wait a minute, what? I mean, my ankle's totally buried in here. Yeah, don't click away, hang on. I'll tell you why. What you need to do, let's see if I can raise my foot up here, is you really need to do alphabets. A, B, C. Pretend you're holding a pencil in your toes and literally write out the alphabet. You know, E, F, G. And you think that's totally a dumb idea, but trust me, what that does is that strengthens the ligaments and tendons and everything in your legs but it most importantly, it improves the strength of the balancer muscles, those tiny little fibers that hold you up. Because as you're walking around with this, you know, five pound or 2.3 kilogram boot plus crampons, you get tired. You get really surprisingly tired. And there's more points, just stay tuned in a minute. But by strengthening, strengthening your ankle, that actually strengthens the entire structure of the lower part of your foot and also your upper part of your calf that helps you be more stable when you're walking. So that's a real key idea. The second thing you want to consider as a combo is literally do the jazzercise thing of leg lifts. Here, I'll uh, do this, but don't just do them bare-legged. Put some weight on your feet, lay on the floor, and start doing leg lifts like that, but also the reverse where you do side lifts, where you're lifting up your thigh to the other one and put the heaviest boot you can on there. Because again, the trouble of walking on the crampons when you're walking around is your legs usually swinging around. Because as mountain climbers, we like to strengthen up our quads, our hamstrings, and maybe our calves. But naturally, we all, we quote unquote, ignore the side muscles, the IT band, and the inner thigh muscles, and this little monster on the inside of your knee that gives you a lot of stability. So by doing those exercises, it makes a big difference and not going and then stabbing yourself. So hang on for those stories. The next trick is to literally put zip ties around your leg, like, <laughs> you literally, I'm gonna just barely put them on here. You're literally gonna put zip ties on your legs. Make sure you can unclick them and adjust the zip ties on your boots. So when you're walking, if those zip ties start touching your other foot and you feel this, adjust them to tell you, ooh, I need to be careful because I'm getting my feet too close to each other. It seems dorky, but it really works because a lot of us, when we walk, we tend to actually swing our legs. We don't naturally swing them back and forth. There's a little bit of out sweep or some people in sweep. If you've ever scuffed your boots together, believe me, it happens and it's something you want to watch for. So of course I've locked the zip tie to my leg, but literally one of these zip ties attached to your leg and just see if they start tapping each other. Now, you don't want to develop the issue where you're swinging out like this because that's even worse, but I want you to be conscious of is coming together and tapping your boots together because that's how you snag one boot onto the other and then things go wrong, just like I'm going to tell you in a few moments in my video. The next thing is to use steel ankle weights. Oh, these bad boys are awesome. Not only because if you practice with your ankle weights at home, not just wearing your boots, but put these ankle weights on, it strengthens the entire structure of your foot and prevents you from wandering around. But most importantly, as you're walking, if you hear that tapping, 
you know that your feet are crossing and you're crashing into your other boot. And that is a great simulation at home because you probably don't want to walk on your floor in crampons, but this teaches you not to kick your feet together because the moment you hear this clank is the indication that you've tapped your feet together, you're stumbling, you're hanging up, and you're falling down. Now also, coordination is super important, but be aware to keep that crampon strap on the outside of your foot. Don't tie it so it's reversed and you get the inside. The hook shouldn't do that, but just be mindful of that. Also, this little flapping strap is death, people. Make sure, make sure to tie that down with either at least a single overhand or a double overhand knot because you don't want that darn thing flopping around and snagging up. Now, is this probably an issue too? Yeah, I've stuffed it in there. I do all sorts of effort to put this in there. So you got to be careful about that. Also, make sure, here's another point, stay tuned for the crazy thing, is to do stretches. The IT band stretch, where you literally lay on the floor and you stretch over and you stretch this part of your butt and also the IT band on the outside of your leg because what happens to us as runners and climbers is that we don't stretch. If you do stretch, you're doing much better. Trust me on that one. But if you don't stretch, you end up walking like the Hulk or Iron Man or something, and you end up very inflexible, and you think, oh, that's great. I don't want to be flexible. Ah, no. Notice how tens, you know, sexist comment here, but the ladies tend to be a little bit more svelte in their climbing and they don't tend to have as many issues as guys have. Now, you could be totally wrong, don't click away, just give me the benefit of the doubt here. But I tend to see female climbers do much better than men. We all like to go doing this, but the lady climbers, they're much stealthier because they're much more conscious of their walking, stay to the end of the video, and I'll tell you why. But also, they tend to be more flexible. Men, we just don't stretch out, and as a consequence, that causes us to stumble around and it causes issues. Here's another thing. Here's a good point. Set up your phone with a selfie stick or just against the wall and literally film yourself, start, start at the camera and literally film yourself walking away from your camera and look to see, are your legs literally going like straight? Are you sweeping in like a lizard? Are you scuffing your feet? Are you kind of duck walking or waddling? What are you doing? It's really important that you film yourself so you can see what you're doing because it makes a lot more impression on your brain to say, oh gosh, I didn't realize I was throwing my right leg out, but I'm swinging my left leg naturally or vice versa or whatever you might have going on. You'd be really surprised to see you who you think, oh, I know how I walk. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, when I go to the running store and I see the videos of people running, sometimes they're in, they're up, it's really awkward. So that's something to check out too. Also, uh, here's another point, uh, Jake, and then other people who are watching this, is when you're stepping on ice, especially hard ice, and it, the, this is the big issue, you know, your knees flopping around, so do all those exercises I told you but make sure you stomp hard. And this is hard on your joints and your hips and everything. But when you walk, make sure you go because that helps crunch the points of your crampons into, your, or into the ice. And it makes a big difference. If you're just gently tapping on stuff, it's very easy to wobble around. But if you go it makes a big, big difference. So also, when you're on steeper slopes, definitely give a good solid kick in because that makes a big difference. So here's the first thing that you waited for. Story number one. <laughs> I didn't practice what I was preaching. I got some new nice Millet Everest style boots that I've used on Denali. And yeah, I was climbing up a super steep hill, 40 or 50 degrees. I wasn't practicing, wasn't strengthening. And sure enough, right there, and on the side, I stumbled, snagged my freaking crampon into my $1,000 boots on the second day I owned them. 
Holy bleeping bleep, Batman. Yes, and I also stumbled and snagged and stabbed my foot <laughs> into my boot. Now, fortunately, these are really tough, but man, I was ticked. You can also see a good stab hole there. <laughs> so yes, uh, story number one, that's bad. Wait till the end, this is the crazy thing. Story number two, check this out. Uh, the store in San Diego, Adventure 16, A16, I was talking to one of the clerks and she was climbing San Gregorio and she said she, she was pretty svelte in how she walked, but she didn't build up the leg strength and the side muscles and the inside and this little abductor. And what happened to her, she was walking along, she stumbled because she wasn't used to the weight on her feet, a la use these, she stumbled and literally buried the point of her crampon into her calf. Not like touched it, but it literally went all the way in to the hilt and she fell over and then her crampon was buried in her calf and she couldn't stand up because of the way the hook, she couldn't lift it up. She had to have, she told me she had to have another climber help her get her boot out. Oh my gosh. Bad news, bad news, stay to the end. This is the real kicker. So two stories to make you very well aware. Also practice wearing your crampons in boots that provide zero protection if you step and stab yourself. That will motivate you like you can't believe. If you've got your crampons and you put your crampon through your boot and you stab yourself, you will become much more conscious about how careful you're walking and stepping because sometimes it totally matters. So stay tuned, hang on, I'm gonna tell you the crazy stuff. But very into the video. My name is Aaron Linsdow, I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost at Windy Corner, where I talk about the joys of crampons and Denali. The most crucial knots to know, Adventure Expedition 1, how to keep your feet warm in the cold, the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, wait for it, my show World Beyond, and Antarctic Tears. Now, here's what you've been waiting for, last moment. Gentlemen and ladies, you have no problem with this, please don't take this as sexist, but men, if you really want to test to see how stable your feet are, See if you can find some crazy boots or maybe put a block on your boots where you're walking like this, like the ladies do all the time with these high heel jobs and platform shoes. They never have a problem, they walk. But men, we put this thing on. <laughs> if you wanna break your knee or your ankle, that's a good way. So I know that sounds crazy, but if you really want to become proficient at walking on these crazy platform shoes, Maybe go consider getting one of these, uh, you know, that's a little bit crazy, but thoughts to you. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. Also check out, I'm starting an entrepreneur channel soon next year talking about my experience. I actually haven't worked a day job since 2012. I've been doing a lot of things full time and uh, check out the link below. I'm gonna be starting that soon. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe out there in your crampons.